Hi everyone, Pastor Jeff Woodward here from Metro Church with what we call our Grow Session. You know, one of the things I think that's been a characteristic of most of the people here at Metro was just a hunger to grow, to want to continue to press on for more, not to be satisfied, to be grateful, but not to be satisfied saying, God, there's more and there's more wisdom, more anointing, more knowledge, more understanding that can come our way. And so that's why we host this session. We pray that it will be a great blessing to you, uh, whatever part of life you're in right now, whatever your season looks like, I pray that this will speak to you. Uh, in this Grow session, I've got a wonderful guest who's been a part of our lives, Rhonda and, and mine, for so many, many years. And it's just a joy to have with us again, the Reverend Marcus Ardern, now back in New Zealand but made a special trip here to be with us. Thank you, Marcus. Great to be with you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Marcus, I wanted to dive right into this because 2 Peter 1 verse 4 says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great, which I love the way that that says, you know, yes. that these are not just promises that are enough. God's not about just you getting survival, but he's about abundant more. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. And, um, you know, these great and precious promises are given to us so that we might partake of them. Yes. And yet for so many people, perhaps that's not their upbringing or their way. That's, that's right. not something they've ever heard of, that God is that invested in them, that he wants to pour out abundance on them. And I know you've lived with that kind of a revelation in your life for many years, traveling full-time, not paid a salary by a church or any other missions organization. It's your life has been a by faith life. Yes. So how special are those promises of God to you? How, how does that work for you? When you get answered prayer, it, it, it feeds your reassurance that God actually hears and answers. Right. And the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. It kind of rubs in the reassurance that you you must be his child because he's answering you. And, wow. and he knew the situation, especially if you pray in secret and God rewards you openly. When it comes, you go, somebody is reading my mail. Somebody's wow. listening. This is not just pretense. I, I watched a little girl on a plastic telephone having a long conversation and I thought that's how, when I've been in unbelief, that's how I felt about prayer, wow. that it changed me but it didn't change God and even mm. if there was no answer I'd be reassured by my fake friend, my imaginary mm. friend, the Sky Father, you know. Mm. But to be in contact with a real God who really answers mm. King David says, he calls him, thou who answereth prayer, mm. just, or heareth prayer. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah, wow. Well, well, I know you've certainly had, over the years that I've known you, lots of instances. We interviewed you a year or so ago about the provision of the house yes. that you're now living in, yes. in Christchurch. And, uh, you know, what a blessing that is, that really kind of, came out of nowhere and I wanted to ask you about that because the idea of a transactional God yes. who I talk to and my faith moves I think even that's far too small for who God really is that's right that there's a God who's bigger than you know the verse that says he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or even think Ephes according to the power that's in us Ephesians 3.20 yeah yes and that whole idea that there's, and, and I know this is what you uh, see in your own life, a God who says, I'll answer before you ask. That's right. I'll be involved. Yeah. That's right. Mm. So talk to us about your understanding of that dimension of God. Well, Jesus said, your father knows what things you have need of before you ask. Right. And I found that to be true. And early in my Christian life, I had a diary, I wrote in the back all the things I would like to request from God. And I was setting up a new flat and I wanted curtains and I wanted things for the fireplace. And I I just walked through the house and made my grocery list. 
wow. presented it to God and just said, you can say no to all of it or you can say yes to anything you want, but here's my list. And at the end of the year, I had ticks and dates beside each thing as they wow. had arrived and most of it had come. And, and some of it extraordinary, some of it things that I didn't need but would have liked. Uh, like aquariums for my fish and things like that. And somebody gave me their old aquariums not knowing I'd prayed them in. Wow. And the same has happened with rent or food for guests or yeah, wow. so on. God God loves to give. He's generous. But there's something in it all, Marcus, and you alluded to this a few moments ago where you talked about knowing that there's a God who cares and who wants yeah, to oh, do yes. that. That's more than just God being like Santa Claus who delivers well, what He's you... not Santa Claus and he's not our delivery boy. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm allowed to give the list, but God is sovereign. He decides mm. what's best for me. Mm. Wow. But there's something in the walking with God and seeing his provision that's far greater, to me, a greater joy oh, yes. than what I actually get, if that makes sense. Yes, and... In olden times, Christians living by faith have made statements about it and told anecdotes and so on that all have the same point, that God's more willing to give than we are to receive. Wow. And the Bible wow. has got many verses that say that, and wow. it's true. Uh, uh, for example, one classic story was of a little old lady on a, a liner, a boat, an ocean liner, who slept in deck chairs and had her own provision of food because she didn't know that food at the captain's table was provided in the cost of the ticket. Wow. And wow. and that many Christians are like that. Yeah, right. Uh, that they don't dare to ask because they're unaware of how willing God is to give. Yeah, right. And Jesus taught a, one woman in an encounter saying, if only you knew what the gift of God is, yeah, right. you would have asked wow. and I would have given. Wow. And... But fortunately, according to 1 Corinthians 2.12, part of the Holy Spirit's mission is to show us what we've got. It mm. says we have not received that spirit that's from the world, but that spirit which is from God, that we might know the things wow. freely given to us. So wow. even a brand new Christian can be guided by the Lord. As you read the scriptures, he can speak to you and show you what you've got. And mm. that builds faith to claim it because... Once you've got a promise, you've got a license to ask. Mm. Uh, one man was rebuked when he was praying, asking God for something, because he said, don't tell God what to do. And he said, no, if you find a promise of God, you've got a license to pray because mm. he has said, this is what I want to do. You're only mm. asking him to do what he wants to do. Mm. You're not demanding anything from mm. a big sense of entitlement. Mm. If it's God's desire to give you something, you ought to receive it because it's mm. tools for a task or equipment for somebody else who needs it. And to withhold is not humility. It's a fake humility of independence from God wow. that I don't really, I, I can manage. No, you can't. You need God's help. Without him, you can do nothing. Is there, uh, you know, because what you're talking about is an ignorance of that. Are there verses or parts of the Bible that, because you are sharing often with people that are new to, to walk yes. with God. Is there part of the Bible you point them to and say that that's where you should start? One of the ones that I do point to is the First Corinthians two twelve. Right. We have received that spirit which is from God, not mm. the world spirit, mm. so that we will know what we have. Right. But there are other verses that God's reassured me with when I've doubted, like. Um, God has made us able to inherit with the saints in the light. Uh, I remember a neighbor of mine saying, when we talked about what God was willing to give me, I sin too much. But see, I know that God's taken care of the sin problem. He's forgiven mm. it. He's blotted out our sins. Mm. They're not a hindrance between me Some and Some people are hard to give to, aren't they? I mean, you know, yes, uh, even right. just naturally in life, if you've ever given a compliment to someone and they go, oh, no, well, you know, that was nothing. Or, That's right. And you just go, look, I'm well, trying to give you a compliment. Just I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. And evil people use it for disadvantage. People in the cults will give you a free flower and then ask for a donation. Mm -hmm. And psychologically, if you're given something, you think, well, they gave me something. I should give them something. Mm -hmm. So they've got you over a barrel, but it's a deception. Mm -hmm. And 
God is not like that. In fact, the Holy Spirit emphasizes our poverty and our uh, inability to mm. give to God and then lavishes abundance on us. Mm. And it's, it's very deliberate. Like when it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, when you know I've got nothing to give, but God's got everything to give, it mm. changes the whole perspective. Mm. And we just have to learn how to receive it. Uh, when that sense of unworthiness is kind of a bit cutesy almost when it's someone you give a compliment to, oh, I know that was nothing. But if you transfer that over into the spiritual realm, many people are locked out of the blessing of God because they mistakenly think they don't deserve it and they're unworthy. That's right. And they're frightened of seeming proud. Yeah. So yeah. if you say to a lady, what a beautiful necklace, and they'll say, I got it on a blue light special at Kmart. Yeah. And you think, I don't need to know that. Yeah, right. I just said it looked beautiful. Yeah, right. You know, or you say something, oh, that's lovely. And yeah. they apologize and yeah. they demean the compliment. Yeah, right. Mm. Certainly a, a sense of, I think, um, one of the verses that changed my life was in the book of Romans uh, because if ever I stumbled or sinned, which was probably only about every day, um, you know, and then a crisis or a problem would arise and then I'd, I'd go, oh, I really want to ask God for this, but then immediately condemnation would come in and I'd go, oh, I can't. Yes. And that verse in Romans where it says, the righteousness which is of faith speaks in this manner. Oh, I like that. And I realised that condemnation makes me go quiet. Yes. I, I come before God and feel guilty. I don't feel worthy enough to ask, so I go silent. But righteousness doesn't make you go silent, it makes you vocal, That's makes right. you speak. Having so the same I spirit of faith, we speak. Yeah. Yep. So I began to act out of that and start to say, God, I am guilty. I did that. I shouldn't have done it. I wish I hadn't. And I can't undo it now, but I'm righteous by faith in you. Amen. Totally. So I'm coming just as confidently as if I'd been living pure hearted and yes. and and holy the whole moment. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So according to the Bible we're given a free gift of righteousness. Yeah, right. And if that's true it's taken care of the unrighteousness. Yeah well. Or another way of approaching it. In first John it says if we confess our sin, mm -hmm. he's faithful to forgive our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Yeah. Well, that last part, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, doesn't leave any behind. Yeah, well. And so when I read a promise of God with a condition, like, mm -hmm. for example, Psalm 112, the righteous man will have this and this and this, my first take on it is that can't be me because I'm not righteous. I know what mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. My second take is, but if Jesus is my righteousness, did he fulfill it? Mm -hmm. Well, he did. Mm -hmm. And... Am I his child? It says the child of the righteous will be mighty upon the earth. That's me. I'm his child. Uh, or if I'm made righteous, I can look through that. You know, he shall not believe an evil report. Then it talks about the abundance in his house that God mm. gives. I believe for that. Mm. And I even found a verse in um, Deuteronomy 28, about 47, that God said, I cursed my people because they refused to serve me with joy and uh, gladness for the abundance of all things. So their reluctance to take hold of the promises of God brought mm. a curse. Mm. He wanted to watch them enjoying his promises and he says, if you refuse to do it, mm. you'll, you'll be cursed by what you did. Mm. It's our duty to well, there's take... that verse that Hezekiah who, who said, oh, I'm not going to ask, and God said, you don't weary me by asking. You weary me by not asking. Well, that's a great passage. I haven't thought yeah. of that. I like that. <laughs> well, I'll that. use that one. Yeah. But oh, you that's know, the truth. But it, yeah, but it is. And I mean, we, you've talked about, you know, a sense of unworthiness that stops us receiving and ignorance of God's word. Yes. And, you know, there are... That's why we should keep exploring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. And that's why... You know, no matter how many times you read the Bible, it's got to be the most unique book on the planet that even if you've read it 500 times, the 501st time, you will read it and the Holy Spirit will illuminate something to you that yes. you go, never saw that before. Yes, the author guides you through the book. 
yeah. the Holy Spirit is the author, but also older Christians, uh, when I see them quoting favorite Bible promises or mm. see them receiving by faith, even if you're not academic and you're not particularly well trained or you find the Bible intimidating, you see other people feasting on the book, getting something out, and they transfer it to you. They tell you, this is what I claim, this is what I saw, just like you were quoting some verses mm. that have helped you. That's how I learned quite a few of the Bible verses, not by academic study, mm. but by hearing other Christians use them. Right. And especially old missionary books where people have been in life-threatening situations or bad weather or war zones or poverty zones, and you see God come through for them mm. and his promises and provide them food for their children and clothes and wow. open doors that seem to be locked. God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Yeah, well, When those things happen, you go, well, if he's no respecter of persons and I'm a believer too, why not? One of the things, though, that, that also I think hinders people from asking boldly is the kind of a notion of, well, you know, it's a fallen world, it's just life. Um, and so I know for me growing up, it seemed to me that God's answers to prayer were fairly random Yes, in the people that I knew. Mm. There was no confident expectation, no boldness. You know, we were taught to pray for be thy will in case, you know, God may have had some other idea. And, and it always seemed to me genuinely to absolutely short circuit faith. You know, in an electrical current, a mm. short circuit interrupts where it's supposed to go and prevents it. And that seems to me to be one of the great shortcuts to people's faith is this idea of, well, after all. You know. I still fall into it. Really? I, yes, I find very often I settle for less than God's best wow. and make do. And I hear him speak from within me, challenging me, act like you've got a generous heavenly father. Wow. And there are times that I have made do with things. And I'll give you an example. I was talking to a missionary from India. And they were telling me about how they would eat carrot soup and they would have things eat poorly because they felt that it was too much to ask mm. God for steak. Mm. And they met missionaries who ate steak and thought, how on earth can they afford that? Wow. And the, the other said, well, we think that God loves us enough to give it to us. Yeah. So they decided to try it and from then on often ate steak. Huh. And... The problem was in their head, not yeah, in right. God, mm. not even in India. Yeah, right. The problem was in their head. Yeah. And it, it, the Bible says, truly, uh, my expectation is from him. That doesn't just mean the supply. It means the ability to expect yeah. to come to the place that David says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me mm. all the days of my life. Yeah. Well, it's true that God doesn't have favorites except that every child of his is a favorite child. If I asked my mother who has seven kids, if I said, mum, which one's the favorite? My mother unfailingly said the same thing. You are all my favorites. Yes. And I love that because, you know, uh, I think God feels the same about all of us. He doesn't love the person on the platform or the preacher who's well known or anybody more than he loves the newest child and the child that struggles. That's right. Mm. Yes, I agree with that. Also, um, Jesus got all the brownie points, all the righteous points, all the mitzvah, all the um, blessings that he earned and refused to take them so that he could store them up for us. Mm. And the Bible says that in Second um, Corinthians 8, 9, you know the grace of our Lord mm. Jesus Christ that mm. although he was rich, Yet he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Yeah. And so all those, God the Father owed the reward to Jesus being a righteous man. And Jesus refused to take it. And instead of taking the blessing, took our curse mm. on the cross and made available all that he had earned for our sake. Yeah. So when I see a promise with a condition, I go, did Jesus earn this? The mm -hmm. Heavenly Father owes it to the Son. I can collect the prize that the Lamb of God purchased for me. Tell everyone the story again. 
you've told me this a few times, it's one of my favourites. You were in Finland or Russia or up on the third floor having a meeting. Oh, the dog. The dog one. That I just, I love it because you've had a few of these stories and encounters that I've heard of. I love the idea that God's bigger than me and my faith. Oh, much bigger. You know, that, because otherwise you fall into the trap a lot of Christians are in where it's all about my faith. And, you know, if, if I so much as doubt for a split second, I'm done. You know, I'm wiped off. I'm discarded as though, well, obviously I'm a second or third class Christian and you'll never get anything. And the story, where were you again in that story? In Siberia. Siberia? Yes. Okay. And if I remember some of the story, you obviously didn't speak any Russian, was it? That's right. Or very, a handful of words and no grammar. Yeah. yeah. And nobody there spoke any English. Yes. And you're very alone. Yeah. That's right. I'll let you tell the story. I'd been through a rough time just before. Uh, I was traveling with somebody who could speak Russian, but he was often not with me. Mm. Uh, my interpreter at church was a lady who didn't want to have any social time with me because it looked like we were up to mischief. Mm. So she didn't want to talk. And I got lonely because I'm from a big family with close relatives and I have very affectionate friends. I'm very touchy feely and I'd be out in the street listening to conversations and unable to know what they were talking about, a stranger in a strange land with people mm. of a foreign tongue. It was real to me. And those Bible references, I thought, this is how it feels to be alienated, mm. like immigrants must often feel when they've only got broken English. I felt like that. And also, I was in a dangerous area. There was a very high crime area. You'd find blood on the steps going back up to the home where we were staying and there were lots of break-ins. We had to leave the radio on when we were out so that it seemed like somebody was in the building. Uh, and if you were going somewhere, you'd go to, it was snowing and it was icy cold. You would catch the bus and you'd have to change maybe two, three times on the bus before you got to your destination. And there might be men drunk on vodka fighting at the bus stops. So if a fight was in progress and there was a crowd, you would go past your bus stop so that you weren't involved in the trouble. And then you'd wow. go back. <laughs> and in the hotel where I stayed... I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's so surreal. But go on. It was. And if you bought a ticket out... There were fake tickets out, so you never knew whether the ticket out went that you'd purchased from a tourist place was valid or not. It might not be. Wow. Or they would tell you to be at such and such a station at such and such a time, and bandits would take your luggage because that wasn't the time that the vehicles were leaving at all. Wow. Uh, one man was stopped in the hotel and his jeans stolen and his shirt because they were foreign and prized. And so the other men in the hotel swapped around and gave him clothes so that he could wear stuff as he left. He was just robbed at knife point in the hotel. So you're in that situation and you're lonely and there's the blood on the stairs and all those things is not exaggeration, but when they all accumulate, you just think, God better be with me because who knows what's waiting today. Wow. You know, that's how it is. Wow. Also, the local Christians, uh, who were mostly Orthodox people or unbelievers, had been told that tourists were dangerous and deceptive. And so they don't know whether you're a builder or a destroyer, so they're not always friendly to you when you wow. do arrive. So that was the context. I go up to the building where the meeting was. You climb the stairs. And it was a rickety pulpit that if you leaned on it, it might fall over to bits or whatever. And I'm talking to a group of people who are looking at me, not particularly trusting. Some of them were, some not. And I just felt empty. And I'm just saying, Lord, I'm spiraling down. I can feel my mood crashing. Please encourage me. And a dog that I'd had in Atlanta, Georgia, in America, who had died, 
called Shadow, who was a Malamute who looked more like a wolf than a normal Malamute, you know, in the same way that Alsatians or mm. um, German Shepherd dogs, some of them are big furry mm. things and some are quite lean. She was quite lean and nasty and quite violent as a dog uh, to other dogs. And I wouldn't trust her with small children even. But in my way, I loved her. She had very, very blue eyes. While I was preaching, my old dog came up the stairs and walked up to the pulpit and just stood there looking at me. And I was just weeping because I saw her again. It wasn't, wasn't her. No, God just found a dog that looked like it. Wow. And... And nobody stirred, nobody chased it out, which is unusual. It had come up three flights, and then it went. I once told it in a church, and the pastor told me it was best not to tell the story because it was too weird. But to me, it was, God knows where you are, knows your address at all times, his eyes on every child all the time. Yeah, well. And he knows what's going on inside of you as well as outside of you, and he cares what kind of a day you have. Yeah. You know, that's what Peter told the believers when they were troubled. He said, casting all your care on him because he careth for you. Yeah, wow. Well. God cares about you. And if a dog will do it for you, he'll bring you a dog. But if it had been a canary, he might have brought you a canary. He knows what will suit your case. I think that's the thing, though, that in all of this, I wish people knew. Like, often people who don't know God, they really do think of God as like, you know, the, it, it's like I call it spinning the chocolate wheel. You know, it's like a random, yes. maybe you get it, maybe you don't. You know, that's what they tend to think. And when you tell me stories like that, I, I'm reminded all over again of the times of my life where God did it. Oh, absolutely. It wasn't me. You know you haven't manipulated it and no. you haven't tricked yourself yeah. into it mm -hmm. and you haven't just put a spin on it when it might just be a coincidence. And you get enough strange, crazy coincidences, you have to say, maybe it's God, you know. And But I find the two things coexist. I can have an uncertainty mm. at the same time a miracle is happening. I wanted to ask you about that because we've talked about feeling unworthy and ignorance of the word of God and these promises. Uh, you know, low expectations of, you know, what's just life. But the, the last one I find trips up so many people when it comes to faith, because I don't think faith is always you flip a switch. That's right. I think often for people, faith is a journey. That's why I say this mm. doubt sometimes at the same time. Yeah. And doubt is not necessarily denying God's testimony. So mm. the Bible says that when Sarah and Abraham were told they would have a child, they both thought it was a joke and they both <laughs> laughed. That's right. And neither of them got punished. Yeah, right. They just go, this is unbelievable. Well, like, well, but like they weren't the, saying it's a lie. Like the guy in Mark 10 who says to Jesus, you know, when he's got a tormented son, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Yes. You and yet Jesus doesn't point. condemn his uncertainty. He simply brings the answer to him. I mean, how, you you mentioned before about doubting. How do you? What do you do when doubts crowd in, Marcus? What? How do you? What? what what's your answer? For that? I've been wrong so often that it's not crushing to be wrong again. Right. So I'm quite willing to be wrong. And I have a philosophy: try a hundred times because if two of them result in a miracle, you got two miracles you wouldn't have had. Right. And and because life's not an exam, you can't fail. It doesn't matter if you're wrong. I'm quite used to being wrong. So I'll, I've claimed things that God's never given me and felt like I was full of faith, even felt I had Bible verses reassuring me. Crashed and burned, never happened, didn't work out the way I wanted. And I go, that's all right, because God chooses our inheritance. But when the miracle comes, it's so astounding and so big, you're glad you didn't go into cynicism and refusal. You know, and, and James, who was the Lord's brother, Jesus' brother, says, you have not because you ask not. Mm. And I think, well, that's never going to be me. I'm going to be a big <laughs> asker. I, I'm going to keep asking. Uh, you might as well try. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I and sometimes I hear somebody else make a, a bold statement and I just copy them. So, for example, I listened to a female preacher in America saying, I've got a big mouth, Lord, if you come through for me, I'll tell everybody. Well, later on, I was trapped in a mountain in Armenia uh, where I was dehydrated. I was climbing with a friend and we were lost. And, and it was a very dangerous area because you're on the border of Turkey and Iran. It's bristling with surveillance equipment. We had past signs forbidding climbing in that area and we'd ignored them and done it. And so we were up there in the searing heat with pebbles in our mouths because there's no water and otherwise you get dehydrated and panic. And we knew panic was not our friend while we were lost. And it, and it's not nice mountains with snow and trees everywhere. It's rocks and they heat up like an oven. And there we were lost. And I remembered what the American preacher lady had said. So I said, Lord, I've got a big mouth. If you save me, I'll tell everybody. You know, it'll be in your interest to help, you know. And I did. And we accidentally... I always loved that about you, Mark, because you were just so honestly transparent with God, like, like, hello, it's in your best interest. <laughs> That's great. Well, and the wonderful thing in Psalm 107, it talks about fools because of their rebellion were afflicted. Yeah. And it says, nevertheless, he saved them for his yeah. own namesake. So even when you're disqualified, God can come through because he loves to show himself wonderful. And he is. So what happened in Armenia? Oh, we accidentally found our way back. There was no big miracle, oh. but it was. I mean, it's the, some things are the goodness of God and you don't know what a miracle it is until you get to heaven and you yeah. discover God moved the immovable or did yeah. amazing things. I mean, had the police come and got us, there was no doubt we'd broken laws. What we had done was wrong. We should not have been there. It was our own fault. Uh, wow. But it ended up okay and I lived to fight another day. You know, that's how a lot of my life has been, that I think if I would be living on God's justice only, right and wrong, I would have been disqualified years ago. Mm. And I have been by other Christians sometimes. Mm. But if I think of God blotting out my sin and saying your sins and your lawless deeds I will remember no more and I will write on your heart and I'm the God that goes before you and behind you I'm your reward and your guard he takes care of my past he takes care of my future and he helps me today a very right. present help in trouble yeah, Psalm 46 says yeah. a very present help that means it's not pie in the sky when you die Yeah, it's steak on the plate while you wait Wow. It's now. Yeah, wow. Well. Now is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. We, we need to to draw this to an end, and thank you for your wisdom and your amazing stories. I, I hadn't actually heard about Armenia before, but yes. um, Hebrews eleven six. Yes. It's a great verse. It says, he that comes or she that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder, which I always think the, it's the last half that's the forgotten half. Yes. Everybody knows when you come to God, you believe that he's there. Yes. But it also challenges us to say, but I believe that he'll be my rewarder. Yes. The, I'm seeking him, and that's the requirement. It's not, are you perfect? It's not, are you yes. spotless? It's, are you seeking God? Are you going in the direction God's going in? And I've often thought that my only characteristic of any virtue is just continuing to go forward. Amen. You know, continue to go, God, I messed up. Like you said before about, you know, you have had answers to, or, or things you wanted answers to prove and you never got them. Yes. So my next question is, well, then why did you get up and keep going forward? Why didn't you fall back into cynicism? Why didn't you just give up? Why didn't you go, oh, it's all too hard? Because there's no miracles there. Yeah, well. Miracles come to those that keep trying. And, and there's... Just an amazing thing. In, in Romans 15, it says that God is the God of all encouragement mm -hmm. and that the Holy Ghost helps you overflow with hope. Mm -hmm. So I believe there's an anointing, not only of faith, which is a free gift, but even of hope, that the Holy Spirit himself helps you hope. Yeah, well. and, and then I read in Romans 10 
that the, there's no difference between the Jew or the Greek, the same Lord is Lord of all, rich unto all who call upon him. Mm. Well, all who call upon him, that can be me. Mm. But it means I'm not just going to whisper to God, I'm going to call. Mm. I'm actually going to shout my need, I'm going to call on God because oh. if he's rich unto all that call, that's me. I, I'm going, I want the riches, I yeah, want well. to receive so that I can testify. Wow. It's an exciting journey, though, isn't it, Marcus? And, you know, the, there's ups and downs, no doubt. Yes. And there's some reversals here and there. And there's challenges and difficulties. Psalm 23 starts off in the place of peace, ends up in the place of great victory and blessing. But in between is the valley of the shadow of death. That's right. And I, But I wouldn't have swapped any of my journey with its pains and with its difficulties because sometimes it's in the valley where I found the sweetest Oh, amen. Fellowship with God, you know. Yes, the the soil on the mountaintop doesn't grow much. Mm -hmm. All the yeah, rich well. fruits in the valley. Very good. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Wow. Well, well. well, look, we, we do want to pray with people. And I'd love you to pray for people who are on a journey of good. receiving something from God. Because there'd be people who are part of this grow session who've got issues with a family that, you know, they can't fix it. They don't know what to do with it. That's right. Or maybe it's a job or a career thing, or maybe it's maybe it's just something in their own self and they're wrestling with doubt and yes. going, God, I need you to help get me right in this whole yes. thing. So if I could, and then I'll talk with people a bit further from that. Thanks. Okay. Heavenly Father, you know who is listening. And every heart is open and bare before him. You know all our thoughts before we have them, and you know all our words before we give them. Your own word says that in Psalm 139. And because you perfectly know our case, and you're the great God who only doeth wondrous things, Father, I pray that there will be miracles in the lives yeah. of those who listen, mm. and that they will dare to believe beyond what they hope or think, according mm. to Ephesians 3.20, that God's able to do exceedingly far above all we ask or think. You said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You said, even if your sons are the legitimate, pray to the tyrant. Even then, you said, I will fight for you and I will save your sons. Mm. So even when we're disqualified, you are our qualifier. Yeah. Mm. You are the one who makes us able to receive. Mm. Father, I pray there'll be much reassurance given by the Holy Ghost in hearts that these people will hear not just our voices, but the voice of the Holy Spirit himself mm. saying, this is for you and you can have it. And there is help from heaven Amen. and your prayers are heard in Jesus name. Amen. 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 You know, you've heard from Marcus today about what it is to walk with God. And and there's no way to, you know, it's not like a travel, I guess it is the difference between looking at a travel brochure and going to the country. Yes, isn't it? a good picture. You look at the travel brochure and go, well, that looks interesting. And then you go there and the sight and the smells and the, and the tastes of the food and everything about it, you go, wow. And I often think that's what it's like when you tell someone about the Christian life versus going through the Christian life. Yes. And you were talking before about, you know, the ticket. Uh, and the Bible tells us that Jesus has already paid in full our fare uh, for the journey that he wants us to go on, the journey of faith. Uh, the Bible says, to as many as received him, to them he gave the power. Wonderful to be called the sons of That's God, or daughters of God, even to as many as call upon his name. And so I just, I know for me, I, I, I don't just want people to, to tick a box for Jesus. I want him to go on the incredibly rich journey of what it is to walk with God. I don't really want them to become a Christian as in wearing a badge or a label. I want him to go on the journey that says, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to find God. He's going to help me. He's going to walk with me because I've found, Marcus, as I know you have, that my ignorance doesn't stop him. Amen. My sins don't prevent him. You know, my sometimes rebellion is not enough yes. to hold him back. All of that he knew when he called me. Yeah, he he knew what I was like and he still said, I want you to go on the journey with me. And so I really pray that if that's you, that you today will say yes to Jesus because I know that your yes is what opens the door to him. 
You know, in Revelation 3.20, a verse that often gets used, but it's still powerful. He says, I stand at the door. He's talking about the door of your life. And he says, I knock and I want to come in. And so I pray that you will let Jesus into your life. You'll welcome him in and then start to go on the journey with God. We started this thing, Marcus, years ago called Yes Text because we recognize that most of us want daily help. I got uh, someone, one of our staff sent me a... Uh, a, a yes text message that came in just this week from someone who said every day what I receive from you is like God helping me. Amen. And so we send them a Bible verse and a prayer. They're different every day. Get it for 30 days. No strings attached. But it's designed to help you start a journey of relationship with God. If you'd like to do that, send us your yes. Y-E-S. That's all you got to send. You, if you're in Australia, and you'd like to get it via text, fits on one screen of a smartphone, we're not going to bombard you. Uh, but you can send that to 0488 826 392. If you're outside of Australia, or you'd rather get it by email, then you go to yes.metrochurch.org.au. Either way, we'll send you that help every single day. And I know it'll be a blessing to you. I just want to pray for you because I thank God, Marcus, for that journey that for me started years and years ago. And I still remember the moment when I said yes to Jesus. I remember where I was. And then I remember all the miracles that unfolded after that as God brought people into my life. So, Father, thank you for each one of these wonderful people whose hearts you are touching. You're speaking to them. You're letting them know that you're there. You're real. You're uh, available. You're wanting to be a part of their life. Lord, I pray that that yes that they're giving to you right now in their heart and then giving it to us via that device. Lord, I thank you that this is the beginning of a wonderful, amazing journey with you. Help them, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, thank you so much, Marcus, uh, for being with us and what a joy it is to have you with us again. By the way, don't forget, coming up, uh, only be a week or so's time is we it's on a men day here we call it it's father's day everywhere else but we want to honor all the men it's going to be a very very special weekend so check out the website be a part of that i also know by the way that it's because it's august when we're filming this it's our destiny offering time and that's a great season for us here at metro where we see miracles as god speaks to us and and helps us every single year for my wife and I as we've made our commitment over and above our regular giving to be a part of the vision and so into that. You know, I don't think there's ever been a year where we had the money. Matter of fact, I'm sure we've never had it. And God has been faithful every time and brought that through. So thank you for that. Thank you for your giving, your generosity. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. God bless you. And we hope we see you somewhere soon.